What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, as you probably could tell from the title, we're going to be talking about Eddie Maguire. So, let's run that intro, jump straight into it. Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch, I still have to finish that Little Hope episode. I've still got FIFA to play. I'm on holidays now from work, so it's going to be two weeks of me streaming, which will be a little bit of fun. But if you are a new swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. If you are a returning swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining us. So let's just talk about Eddie Maguire. Instead of calling on others to do something for our club, fate turned my way. I'm proud that I answered. I've given everything I have to this position. Now it is time for me to set the platform for the club going forward and for me and my board to have the opportunity of providing a Barack Obama style transition rather than a Donald Trump experience. There will always be a reason to go on. Another idea, another campaign, another battle. But in due course, it'll be with another president. So if you've been living under a rock or have no access to the internet or newspapers or whatever, Eddie Maguire announced that after the end of the 2021 season, he'll be stepping down as Collingwood president. He's been president for over two decades, starting in 1998. And we've seen a lot of ups and downs with Collingwood, a lot of ups and downs with Eddie. And it's just all culminated into season 2020 and him stepping down um, after season 2021. So what does this mean for Collingwood? What does it mean for Eddie? Eddie, I'm sure, will still stay in his media role. Not with the Pies, but, you know, Triple M and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and stuff like that. For Collingwood, it means moving on to a new and hopefully better legacy. I'm not saying that Eddie Maguire's legacy wasn't good. It was amazing. But whenever you move on, whether it be a new president, new prime minister or something like that, you want it to be better than the previous administration, and that's what we want at Collingwood. So they will be searching all of 2021 for a new president. It could be someone from the board. It could be someone from left field, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So right now, let's go through what Eddie has brought to the club since 1998 when he came on to the Pies presidency. From now on, Collingwood comes first, second, third, and always. So Eddie's tenure started at the 1998, or the, the end of the 1998 season uh, a coup uh, with the Collingwood board. He came on, uh, unanimously voted in, and then the 1999 season happened. One of the lowest points in Collingwood history. We finished last on the ladder with four wins. We picked up Joshy Fraser um, as, you know, our first pick. And then 1999 ended. Tony Shaw was, you know, booted from the coaching role and in entered ex-West Coast Eagle coach, Mick Malthouse, which was one of the biggest gets in Maguire's, you know, 20 or so year tenure. What that saw was entering into the new millennium with a, a very, very, very good coach and finally a plan to be, um, to make Collingwood come from the rubble that it was to one of the most hated teams in the AFL. And I say most hated teams in the AFL because that was Eddie's barometer of how good we were. If People started hating us again. He was doing his job. So 2000 happened, which was Malthouse's first year as Collingwood coach. 2001 happened, bit of a rebuild. 2002, three seasons after Eddie took office, we made a grand final, losing to the Lions by nine points. 2003, we made another grand final, this time getting smashed by the Lions. And then, you know, obviously some changes happening with um, players and stuff. 2004, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 10, 12 years after Eddie took hold of presidency, he's, the, the, the best accomplishment that he could give us was the 2010 drought-breaking premiership, and it was incredible watching it, and I don't have to go on about how good that was, but that was because of what Eddie had achieved, the personnel he brought in, you know, Malthouse, the players that we brought in. Collingwood was starting to become a destination club. Luke Ball, Darren Jolly. 2011, 
We make another uh, grand final. We go down to Geelong, as you know, 2012 finals. And then it all starts going downhill. 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17. We don't make finals. 2018, out of nowhere, we make another grand final. I kick off a second premiership for Eddie. And then we know how 2019 and this season ended. Look, that's Eddie's tenure in, um, in a heartbeat. Just really quickly... Just to show that he took us from financial ruin in 1999. You know, we could have, if it wasn't for Eddie, and I'm being really serious, we could have went the way of Fitzroy and university folding and stuff like that. That's how much of a financial stress Collingwood were under. And then Eddie comes in, boosts us up. Three years, like I said, we lose a grand final by nine points. We don't like losing grand finals. But to get into the position from last on the ladder to a grand final in three years is absolutely incredible and a testament to how Eddie bleeds in black and white. The club means so much to him, we know, and we owe him a lot, a lot, a lot of gratitude. Look, we will talk about his gaffes and everything because, you know, I want to be as unbiased as I can, but the bias side of me, we attest where we are now to Eddie, whether that be good or bad, depends how you see it, but we've, since he's, what, since he's been in office we made the 2002-2003 grand final, 2010 with technically two grand finals in 2010. We'll call them two. And then 2018, we've made five grand finals. Sure, we've only won one. But, you know, Eddie's not out there kicking the ball around and stuff like that. But, like I said, I just can't stress that in at the end of the 1999 season, we were last, right? Yes, Eddie, that was his first year of presidency, but we were last. And then a couple years later, we make a grand final. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So, Eddie, you're probably not watching this, but Eddie, thank you so much. We owe you a hell of a lot. But, let's talk about some of his gaffes, some things that um, did stuff us up, let's be honest. You know, Eddie's presidency wasn't all roses and peonies and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> we've been through we've been through a lot. It's been a bit of a an Eddie roller coaster. So I'm not going to hark on too much uh, about them. Um, the main one that I that comes to my mind is the Adam Goods incident from the Triple M in the morning. I'm not going to repeat anything he said. You can just Google that if you want to. But a racist term, racist slur, racist connotations with that. He came out, obviously apologized, calls for him to step down. Doesn't step down. He keeps going on. Another one was the Caroline Wilson incident, you know, with the uh, head under the water sort of thing at the at the big freeze and stuff, which isn't on, obviously. He got caught out for that. He apologized for that as well. But you can see that wherever Eddie goes, he does a lot of good. Sometimes he puts his, uh, his foot in his mouth. And although they were very bad things that he, that he said, either way you look at it, he did apologize, which, you know, obviously you're going to apologize. You're not going to stand by those those comments. But then there's all this Heredia Lumumba stuff, and there's still an internal investigation going. But you don't want those incidents to kind of tarnish his reputation. Yes, he puts his foot in his mouth, but so do a lot of other commentators and stuff like that, in my own humble opinion. Um, again, not diminish, diminish not diminishing anything that he did say because they were bad stuff. But the one thing that sticks with me the most, football-related, is the 2008 succession plan. So that was hatched in 2008 that, you know, at the end of 2011, Mick Malthouse was going to hand the reins of coaching to uh, Nathan Buckley and Malthouse was going to be director of coaching. In 2008, that looked like a good idea. 2009, yeah, it looked like a good idea. 2010, we know, Malthouse wins the Premiership. 2011, we go, oh, this is the F- Malthouse's final year. We just lose a grand final. Um, uh, I can't, I think 2011 hurts so much because Malthouse, I don't, it, he wouldn't have done it on purpose, but there was some things that he could have done that could have prevented Geelong from going on and, and, and beating us. But anyway, that was... One thing that will tarnish Eddie's uh, reputation is this succession plan. Was it right? Yeah, it was right at the time. But after your premiership coach wins a pre- well, after your coach wins a premiership, do you say, "Oh, wait a second, we're on a bit of a roll here"? 
Then 2011 happens, you go, wait a second, we're on a bit of a roll here. Our kids are still young, we've got the group still together. Buckley, hold off a little bit longer. We're going to see this right out. But we know that Buckley took over at the end of 2011. 2012, we, you know, we lose uh, into that, that final against Sydney. And then we go into finals oblivion for another bunch of years. We know that Eddie loves the club. We know that Eddie loves Nathan Buckley. I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that Buckley was considered uh, for the head coaching role of the Kangaroos and Eddie just wouldn't have it. So that's why he put in this director of coaching for Mike Malthouse and this succession plan for, for Nathan Buckley. But like anything, 20 odd years in the job is, is a lot, is a lot. And especially for a president. And I say this because I do feel like personally, and I'm sure a lot of other Collingwood supporters do as well, it's time for Eddie to move on. And obviously he has. It's time for new ideas. It's time to stop this yes man mentality. We've seen it a lot with Buckley and his coaching staff. Um, yes, this is going to be good. Yes, this is going to be good. Yes, this is going to be good. Everyone's afraid to say no. Does um, Buckley last as coach during that 2012 to 2018 season if um, Eddie is president? Probably not. That Remember we had that big 2017 review and there was a lot of changes. Buckley got his contract renewed. At that time... If Eddie was not president, does someone else, you know, sack Buckley? Probably, but Eddie wants to keep Buckley, uh, wants to keep Collingwood personnel around Collingwood, which you can see why he's a big fan. But I think now is the most perfect time for him to move on. We're going in a new era. Look, for all intensive purposes, what's happening right now with Collingwood is a rebuild. You'd think that with Eddie Maguire's um, ending of his presidency at the end of next year. A lot of board members will change around as well because that's Eddie's people. A new president isn't going to keep around the same board members unless, you know, they're really top of the line. So does that um, that just change everything? It changes the dynamic. Do you get another Collingwood person into the presidency or do you find someone that is the best for the job and they could not be a Collingwood supporter, they could just be someone else best for the job? Or do you get like a Luke Ball, Christina Holgate, um... There was talk of uh, Brumby as well, but he's uh, announced that he won't be doing uh, going for the presidency. Mark Skoda, who is um, Eddie's second-hand man. You don't see anyone from Eddie's presidency becoming the next president. Whoever it is will take us to where we need to go. And I've been saying this for a while. 2022 could be or will be our year. But what Eddie, again, just want to finish this off on the great things that Eddie has done for the club there could be no Collingwood at the moment. That's that's the that's what we were living with at the end of 1998. There could have been no Collingwood going into now. We definitely, we definitely wouldn't have had that 2010 Premiership without Eddie Maguire. He's done a lot of stuff, a lot of great stuff. He's done a lot of stupid stuff like we mentioned. You know, well, I won't rehash it because he's done a lot of stupid things as well. But for 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 just. Where we were to where we are now, Eddie has been a revelation and it makes sense that he's stepping down, but we cannot be any more thankful, any more grateful for what he has done for the black and white. If you want someone who embodies the black and white spirit, it's Eddie Maguire. Anyway, guys, that's just been my little tangent about Eddie, you know, just what he's been through and, you know, 20, 20 years, broady boy, just like where I grew up. So, um... You know, respect and stuff like that. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Who do you think our next president is going to be? What do you think of Eddie's 23-year reign? reign? Reign or something like that? Like, like some monarchy. Let me know down below. Really look forward to all your comments. But in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll soup you later. Another exclusive blockbuster. Go, boys! Does that have Mick, any that's chance? Not, that's not Mick Malloy over the fence there, is it? <laughs> that's as close as you'll get to greatness, you peanut. Shut up. As oh, Cloak comes in me. Oh, boy, and just like says, have a look at that, mate. That's number seven. <laughs> Cop that, you tiger mongrel. <laughs> what a fantastic goal. Where's that bloke now? That's oh, he's wrong, going home. That's a wrong shape. That's there a, he is. That is a great See ya, goal. pal. Ooh la la.